Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to blur the background of your images using GIMP and this is a technique that makes it appear as if your photos were taken with like a more expensive lens with a shallower depth of field and this is a pretty easy technique to do and we're going to be using GIMP 2.10.8 which at the time of this tutorial is the latest version of GIMP. But of course, before we get into that, I want to direct you guys over to my website at daviesmediadesign.com. As always, we have tons of GIMP video and text tutorials on here, so definitely check that out. You can also enroll in my GIMP 2.10 photo editing masterclass from beginner to pro on Udemy. And you can support our channel and help us grow by becoming a patron on Patreon. And I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So this tutorial uses a combination of the foreground select tool which is built directly into GIMP and the resynthesizer plugin which is a free third party plugin and I'll include a link to the download in the description of this video. I also have tutorials dedicated to both of these tools so I'll link those in the description as well. The resynthesizer plugin tutorial shows you how to download it as well so if you're not sure how to download and install this plugin definitely check out that tutorial. But I'm going to start by opening up my original image which I actually have open already into GIMP. You can always go to File, Open, and find the photo that you want to use for this tutorial. I have this photo available for download for free on my Flickr page, so check that out if you want to follow along with this photo. So as you can see, the background of this photo isn't nearly as blurred as the background of the final photo here. So I'll come back over to my original photo, and I'm going to start by duplicating this layer. So I'll come over here and hit the Duplicate icon. And I'm going to rename both of these, so I'll rename the top one Model Removed and hit the enter key, and then I'll rename the bottom layer original. And so now I'll click on the model removed layer, and I'm gonna come over here to my lasso tool, and now I'm just going to draw my lasso loosely around my model. So I'm just clicking and dragging my mouse to drag this around the model, and then I'll make sure to close this loop here, and also make sure that this goes off the page, and I'll hit my enter key. And in this case, I actually missed sort of a little piece right here, so I can come over here, make sure my mode is set to add to current selection, and just add this bottom piece as part of my selection. So now that I've selected my model, I'm gonna go to Filters, Enhance, Heal Selection. So this is the resynthesizer plugin that you have to download from a third party. So I'll just click on Heal Selection, and I'm gonna change the context sampling width to 150 pixels, and I'll choose all around for the sample from, and then I'll choose inwards towards center for the filling order, and click OK. So this is gonna grab pixels from 150 pixels outside of my selection area, and it's going to fill it in starting from the outermost point right here and fill it inwards towards the center. So once this effect has finished up, you'll see that our model has not been removed, although it's definitely not a perfect job here. Uh, but we really just need this area to have the same colors as our background. And that's because when we blur this, we don't want the colors from our model blurring outside the model. It's not going to look as convincing, really. So uh, this is all we need right here. So once we finish that up, I'll hit Control shift a to deselect that area. And now I'm just going to click and drag the model remove layer below our original layer. Next, I'll come up here to the original layer, and you can always duplicate this and drag it to the bottom, and that way you kind of have the original photo here if you want to compare that to the final result. So once I've done that, I'll come up here back to the original layer, and now I'm going to grab my foreground select tool, and I'm going to use this tool to select the foreground object, which in this case, of course, is our model. So I'll come over here and make sure draw foreground is selected, and now I'm going to click and drag my mouse and you can see right now my mouse pointer looks the exact same as the lasso tool. Again, I have an entire tutorial dedicated to the foreground select tool. So I'll close this loop right here and hit the enter key. And now my mouse pointer will shift over to the paint tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the foreground object. So I'm going to paint my model here. And this is telling this tool that this is going to be my foreground object and everything in that blue area outside, so this area is going to be my background. So you don't have to do a perfect job here, but you do want to get pretty good coverage of what your foreground object is versus your background. Try to get these larger gaps painted out here. Once you've done that, hit the Enter key, 
And now this tool will select your foreground versus your background. So you can see the algorithm has tried to make a strong distinction between my foreground and my background. I should note that I had my feather edges option checked over here and the radius was set to five. So this is going to draw a selection area once we're done and you wanna have the feathered edges option checked in order to make sure that you don't have hard edges going around your selection area. This is just going to help blend any imperfections between the foreground and the background. So now I'm gonna hold control and zoom in a bit here and make sure draw foreground is still selected and I'm just going to paint out any parts that this selected that shouldn't have been selected as the foreground object. So you can see that's helping to refine this here. And don't worry if this isn't perfect because we are gonna go in here again and make some adjustments here. So now I'm just gonna paint some of this hair that should definitely be selected as the foreground. And now I'm gonna switch over to draw background and I'm just gonna draw whatever parts shouldn't have been selected as my foreground. And I can decrease the size of my brush to get into the details here. And then I'll come over here, there's just one last piece that I really wanna make sure it gets painted out, so that's gonna be this area. And then switch back over to draw foreground and paint out this area. And there we go. So I'm gonna hold control and zoom out a bit. So this isn't perfect, but it's good enough for now, so I'm gonna hit the enter key. And now you can see that's created a selection area around my foreground object. So next what I want to do is create a layer mask from this selection area. So I'll click on our original layer here, right click and go to add layer mask. And under initialize layer mask 2, I'm going to choose selection and click add. So now our layer mask is masking out our foreground object and you can start to see some of the imperfections from the model remove the layer behind here. So next I'll hit control shift A and that'll deselect our model. And now I'm gonna come over here to our model removed layer and go to filters, blur, Gaussian blur. And I'm just gonna turn the blur up on here. And so this is what's giving our background that blurred look here or that shallow depth of field. So you guys can blur this as much or as little as you'd like. I'll go with about right there, around 15, and I'll click okay. So now we need to fix some of this area. So what I can do is come over here to my layer mask and now we can hold control and zoom in a bit and I'm going to switch my colors right here by clicking this icon and that's going to switch my colors to black and white and then I'll grab my paintbrush tool increase the size of my paintbrush and when I paint black on this layer mask it's going to go ahead and mask those areas of my layer out so this is actually looking a little bit rough right here if I switch over to white by hitting the X key I can then paint white on my layer mask so let me hit control Z. So this may take a couple of goes, but basically what I'm gonna to try to do is refine the edges right here around my foreground object. So that looks pretty good now. So just any problem areas where you think, you know, maybe it doesn't look as good as it could. So I'm painting black on this area right here to make sure that that area gets masked out. Same with this area. And then I'll switch by hitting the X key to white and just make sure that this area is not getting masked out. And I'll hit X again to switch back to black. Make sure this area does get masked out a little bit. And I'll switch back to white. I think maybe actually this got masked out too much. Nope. So I'll hit control Z. Switch to black. I'll hold control and zoom out. So the more time you spend refining your layer mask and refining the edge between your foreground and your background object, the better that the final result is going to be for this background blurring effect. But I think this looks pretty good right here. So what I'll do now is just create a new layer and name this vignette. And make sure fill width is set to transparency and click OK. And then I'll go to filters, light and shadow, vignette. And that's gonna add a vignette to my image. And now I'm just going to adjust the radius here and also the softness, which will pull that vignette out a little bit so it's not overlapping my model too much. Same with the gamma. And I'll click OK. So I'll hold Control and use my mouse wheel to zoom out. And I'm just going to lower the opacity of this vignette a little bit. And now I can export this image. So I'll go to File, Export As. And I'm just gonna name this Blurred and click export. 
So I'm just exporting this as a JPEG image and I'll hit export again. And there we go. So that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you guys liked it. If you did, please subscribe to my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash daviesmediadesign. You can visit our website at daviesmediadesign.com. You can enroll in my GIMP 2.10 photo editing masterclass from beginner to pro on Udemy. And you can support our channel and help us grow by becoming a patron on Patreon. And I'll include a link to that as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.